Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you a super easy way on how to create the rubber stamp effect in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that. By the way, this is not just a rubber stamp effect, you can also use it as faded color on a concrete wall or you can use it as old paint on wood. So there's a lot of possibilities, you can do edgy designs with that, it's really cool. And you will be surprised how simple it is to create this. So let's delete what we have so far. And now we have a paper background and the fadedness of the color is simply created with our concrete picture as a grunge texture. That is how easy it is, but there is some extra steps, some secret sauce, so keep watching the video. If you ask yourself, where did I get these kind of textures? Well, go over to Pixabay and just search for grunge and you can see you find all these kind of interesting textures here that you can use, play around with them, see what kind of effect they have, how they change the look. The first and most important thing here is to realize that Everything, let's for example create a text here, everything you want to be part of that rubber stamp effect has to be visible while the rest has to be transparent. So if this has a solid background, for example let's make a white background like this, then you cannot read the text anymore. So this does not work, but if you would make the middle transparent and then just have an outline around it like this. That would work again and create an outline around the text. So this is really important. Transparent background, all the other elements have to be separated so they are clearly visible. You will understand in a second what that means. Okay, so we will just go with the text here. And the first thing you want to do is to put the text into a group. So select the layer or the different layers you have for your design. Then press Ctrl G. So we have it in a group like this. And now we will go with the group selected to our effects tab and we will select color overlay. And here you can select a color for your stamp and this will give you a lot more freedom to choose the right color afterwards. And I do it this way because this will recolor all the different elements inside of our group even if they had different kind of colors before. I would suggest to you that you use lightness as the color choice. So click up here on this pop down menu and select lightness. The reason for that is because this allows you to select the darkness or brightness of the color without changing the color and this makes it a lot easier to find a good ink color that works with your background. Good. So this is the first step. Now the next step is to again put this into another group. So with the group selected, press Ctrl G again so this is in a group. Now that we have a group inside of a group, what we want to do next is to pull our grunge texture to the top so it sits on top of the two groups and then right click on it and select mask to below. For now you can't see an effect because we have to do one more step and this is with our grunge texture selected, click on this little cogwheel here, this will open up the blend ranges and now you can play around with the left side with these handles here. So pull this down and you will see that you get a grunge effect here so your color will start to fade. And depending on what kind of fade effect you will have, there's a lot of different choices. You can say just a little bit. So this is very soft in the way that it fades. But if you move this other side in, you can see that it gets more harsh. It gets harder edges. So I can move this around, move this in a little bit, move the other side in a little bit or move it out a little bit. There's a lot of different choices that you can choose from, that you can create your real own design on the look that you want to have. So we can stay with this and this is pretty nice. So the reason why I put this in two different groups is because now I can select the upper group and then I can go here to blend ranges and play around with the blend ranges. You can see this will again change the look of our ink on the paper. So this is pretty important to have this possibility to have that choice. And now 
This is why I recolor this in the second group because now I can select the second group inside of here, the child group basically, go again to effects, go again to overlay and then change my color and make it brighter or darker so I get exactly the kind of ink color I want to have. Look up different rubber stamp photos online to get the right color, to get a feeling for how the ink looks on the paper so this gets a lot more realistic. Another thing you want to try inside of this effect tab is to go with bevel emboss. When you turn this on, first it doesn't look that great, but if you click on this little cogwheel over here, you get more choices and you want to set the radius rather small. It's a very, very slight effect. And then you can play around with the light direction to see what gives you the best kind of results. And like I said, the effect is very slight. The only thing you want to have is that from the rubber stamp hitting the paper, it indents it a little bit. It's a tiny difference that sets the color a little bit deeper is a little bit of a tiny difference and you can simulate it with this bevel effect in a very slight way. Most of the time you won't even realize that it's there but it, it still gives you a certain feeling that it feels a bit more real. So play around with that, see if you like that kind of idea. And because this is based on curves, on vectors, on text, you can change the font, you can add different shapes, you can create all kinds of different designs and labels and cool effects. So this is very versatile. Have fun with it, play around with it. It's a really cool effect to have in your repertoire. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.